Nice job, Phoenix. You just made a mess. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. <laughs> so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guard. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case, no less. True, that is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. Well, bring in that picture. <laughs> what was the Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? There was a spare. Because he was sleeping in it. Mr. Ongar did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we were talking about was a spare one. Yeah. Then are you saying that on the night of the murder... <coughs> Shut up. There were two Nickelback concerts? Oh my god! Just kill me now! But! Don't be trying to slip those quiet ones in there. I think you're gonna slip that past me. That is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? Well, that's... Mm, it would mean that the victim himself had planned to bring this spare to the ceremony. Oh... Was he planning to use the costume to do something? Maybe he was planning to frame... Oh, dear God. The victim... Oh, maybe he, like, wanted to take all the credit? It's just like if I went to a convention dressed up as Ego Raptor, you know? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? Actually, I'd rather, I'd rather stick with my own fans, thank you very much. They're far better than his are. Oh, well, no offense against Ego Raptor fans out there, because I know some of you are. And you're probably the good ones, because you're here. Ah, so that's what he intended. Hmm. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? <laughs> no, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai Spear costume? Oh, God. I don't, actually. Oh, answer with gusto. Yeah, sure thing, no problem. Oh, thank God this is not game point here. This is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai's spare costume to the hotel was... <sighs> Maybe he wanted to, like, dispel the rumors about Adrian going out with him by wearing the costume and then publicly, like, making out with her to make it look like she was making out with the other guy. Hmm. That's as good a theory as any so far out of what I have. This doesn't really tell us anything, does it? Um, what else do we have here? We have this. Seems like the Nickel Samurai confessed something. Yeah. Dude! The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. I forgot about that. Then it would make perfect sense for him to have the costume because he would go down and confess as the Nickel Samurai. He could have got him... Oh my god. So nobody would have known the difference. They would have just assumed it was Matt Ongar. So he was about to, like... I want to say blackmail, but that's not really the right word. He was about to make it look like... I mean, who knows what he would have said if he had actually gone down there in that costume. This is gotta be it. What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. Yep. Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? <laughs> Thank you! But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ongar himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference. That's right, and he didn't know about it. Oh! Fuck. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can mean only one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corita himself. The victim? Yep. Spare Nickel Samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. 
Mr. Corito was going to hold the press conference as the Nickel Samurai. Cue the Aquamarine Bell Bottoms. He was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai and hold a conference. It's like I said. It's like if I went up there as Ego Raptor and said, Hey, I'd jack off to uh, animals, you know? I mean, now that they're... Never mind! That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal. What he intended to say. He wouldn't actually be revealing anything because he was probably going to say something that wasn't true. But I confess I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Corita posing as the Nickel Samurai was going to speak about Mad On Guard. Uh, the way Edwards worded that just now, I actually thought maybe Juan had something to confess himself, and he thought he could feel better by doing it in someone else's costume, because that way he could still confess it and feel better about himself, and yet people would blame the other guy for it. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure! Yup, that's nomenclature. <laughs> no, it's not really, but... Well, maybe. I, don't know. I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes. Just as you say. The press conference was set up by Juan. Yup. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this! I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him? That was also me. Damn. Well, that explains where he got it from. Juan had been bet everything on the Gen Ninja this year, and if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? What was he like secretly, uh... What secret could be that big? Do you know what the secret of Mr. On Guard's is, Miss Anders? Oh god. Please don't tell us now. That would ruin the suspense, man. That's something only Juan knew. I, I don't know what it is. So the secret died with him? Oh my god. Is it possible that Celeste Impacts didn't really commit suicide? And maybe Juan actually killed her? Or I mean Matt? Because then Juan would know about that. Maybe somehow. And that, well, I don't know. But that's to be expected. That I'm suspicious, that is. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. Protect Mr. On Guard? Then why would you help this guy who was trying to... Well, okay. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. Well, here goes the suicide stuff now. It's coming sooner or later here. Oh, man, this, I, I love this freaking game. I swear to God, these are like my favorite parts. These court... From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt I had to protect him. Oh, back up a second. So you didn't kill him. We still don't know who killed him. But I was going to say, we just uncovered a huge motive for her to kill him. Did we? Wait a second. Well, yeah, because he was about to badmouth Matt Ongar. She was trying to protect Matt, so she would kill him before he could say anything. Before he could make this big confession that he was about to make. So that's, that's a huge motive for her to kill him. So now for her to be saying that she thought Matt did it, that just confuses me, but okay. I am the logical type. <laughs> We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If there are no objections, I feel that I can pass a verdict based on this testimony. What? A verdict to who? Now then, Mr. Wright, if you please. 
Yes, it has. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. All right, then. He is on the verge of a verdict. I need to get more coke. I will be right back. I'm so sorry about this. Terrible timing for this. Oh, my God. Oh! Okay, I'm back. For the moment you saw the crime scene, you had a feeling Matt was a murderer. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse these one methods of reasoning with your own. Oh, damn, dude. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? Uh, okay. Motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. Alright, sorry, I was, my screen was off center for a second there. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us at school. At least not from what I remember. May I continue now? Yes. They also taught me algebra, but I've never used that either. Matt had to quit kill Juan no matter what. And he didn't have an out. I didn't mean to skip that. Let's try it. It's grapefruit diet. Try it, because I haven't seen my feed in years. So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. Ongard himself didn't know anything about a press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Mm, he said so? so? Anyway, the important thing here is that this information is not in your testimony. Yes, I agree, Miss Andrews. Please correct your testimony, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? Alright. I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Uh. Okay. That's weird. Has Mr. Ongar done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Carito with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. On Guard, yet you still helped out. Yeah, exactly. What, did he pay you for it or something? The person on trial right now is Mr. On Guard, right? What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with his plan, is none of your damn business. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? <laughs> I mean, he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. Well, they didn't, really. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence. Of course, the button and the knife. Hmm. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. <clears throat> we already did kind of establish that the, uh... Well, that. The stuff about the fingerprints. So what about the button? The button? clear from the crime scene that the victim and the murderer fought, and during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? Yep. That button was found in the police of Matt's Hakama, because we got some buff guts, we got some buff guts, we got buff guts. I would think that makes a pretty decisive evidence. Uh, looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. Uh, anyway... The knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. So that's because I don't like being defeated. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. I can't take her seriously when she's... With her hair all done up like that. Ah! Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. button was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. What is the last one? But I'm Matt's manager. Well, that makes sense. I mean... 
So you kind of made it look like you did it, I guess. That's what you're... Ah, uh, let me see. I'm not sure where we're going with this, like what angle I need to be. When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly. Or so I heard. Yeah, that was true. But why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that, just because I'm prepared and you are not. Oh! I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where? And what? Hmm. Well, Phoenix said it has to be here, so I'm tending to believe that. Hopefully. Drink. Breathe. <sighs> Focus. Mm. And continue. That button was torn off the laundry. It's about to make. What do we have here, anyway? <clears throat> well, first things first, let's look at the autopsy report. What does that say? Time of death. Cause. Strangled with a scarf. Oh, dude, that's it. Dude, if he was strangled with a scarf, well, then why would the button come off? This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Plus, the knife was like going in right where the button was. It's on, in the picture, the knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume when... after the knife was put in. Yep. But we know now... Okay, that's what it is. I had the wrong idea, but that's, thank God. It's kind of accidentally hit the right answer there. It's impossible this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. He was already dead. That's right, Miss Andrews. Choke on it. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off by the victim's already dead body. Hands, man. Order! What is the meaning of objection? <laughs> what is the meaning of this, right? <laughs> so what if the button was torn off the body after the victim already died? What does that change? It makes the button irrelevant. Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edwards. Get him! Get him, Phoenix! Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Ooh. Mr. Wright, does this mean it was premeditated? Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? To uh, pin the crime on on guard, right? Because the, the button ended up in his costume. There was only one logical reason for doing something like that as I leaned towards the mic. Breathe. It was a pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. Reading this dialogue is surprisingly, like, when I really, really get into it, like, I didn't really get into it as much before, I don't think. But man, this one, I'm just like, oh, there's no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. Ha 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 Phoenix, you know all about what, what people put in their pants, right? There it is. Those pants. See, she knows what I'm talking about. And the real murderer is? Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? The screen goes black. Shit's about to get real. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. <laughs> Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The bitter end. The real killer. The person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard is... Pearl! No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, Pearl. Um... It really does seem like it has to be her. Ugh, I don't know why. It just, it just doesn't feel like it would really be her, but... I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Because she's the only other one there. I mean, who else could it have been?